Yo, it's time to do the quarantine series video. Oh, come on, man. The winner always picks something stupid like Phantasm Spiral Assault FTK or uh, FA Winners or Dark Magician. No, dude. It's gadgets. Really? Really. Good afternoon, jank enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. Well, it's been about a month since YCS number 4, and I still haven't followed through on the reward. Lundredy won that tournament, and predictably asked me to play gadgets. What I've come up with is something I'm personally proud of, a deck that seamlessly integrates cards from almost every memorable format, spanning 2008 all the way to Eternity Code into a cohesive, good stuff whole. Presenting, Machina Artifact Gadget. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Press that little button below the video and I promise the next thumbnail for the YugiTuber Grand Championship will be more than just shirtless. So here's the list, and I do want to stress this is a casual deck. It'll hold up fine at a locals, but don't expect to take a YCS with this anytime soon. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now let's get down with Gadget. The Gadget monsters are some of the most beloved Yu-Gi-Oh! icons of all time outside of Shirtless Merrick. Every time they're summoned, they add a different gadget from your deck to your hand. Now back in the day, drawing an extra card a turn was often enough to swing the game in your favor, but it pales in comparison to today's Crocosaur for 9. But fear not! While the gadgets have been all but eclipsed by a metagame that can cure cancer if you don't Valor the Hauka Fibrax, time hasn't been completely unkind to our clockwork children. We're slinging gold and silver gadget, the recently released platinum gadget, and an entire structure deck packed to the gills with generic machine support. Our lines are pretty simple. On the first turn, we're going to make some number of rank 4s by cheating out gadgets with Platinum. Next, we'll either set up a Paguska Locks or a Bist Dweller, depending on the matchup, follow it up with Citadels, and gain enough advantage to grind our opponent out through Rafflesias or via cheaty win cons like Dubs and Dagda. Since we're already on so many trap cards, we're going to smash a couple of trap trick into the list to occasionally stop our Ad Emancipator opponents dead in their tracks with my old pal Artifact Scythe. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First, the gadgets. We're on 3 gold, 3 silver, and 1 of each primary. No reason to double up, Machina Overdrive is an archetypal emerald, so we're never at a loss for extra gadgets. Speaking of, we're on 2 Machina Citadel, our Overdrive target of choice, and a recursive quick effect Raigeki. Next is our amazing extender, 3 Parallel Exceed, which translates into Rafflesias on the play, and I'm gonna be honest, we're just making double over and over again on the draw. We're on 3 Effect Veiler and 2 Artifacts as well. If you feel like that's too many, allow me to guide your eyes to my old pal Dagda. For spells, we're on 3 Called and 3 Schedule, followed by a Double or Nothing. And for traps, we're on 3 Trap Trick, 3 Sanctum, 3 Overdrive, 3 Shade Brigandine, for Redoer, of course, a Grave Diggers, and a Floodgate for Rafflesia. In the extra, we're on Spin Breaker, who's an Earth Machine for those of you keeping score at home, the Utopia Boys, Redoer, Tornado Dragon, Bagusker, Exiton, Emerald, Abyss, Rafflesia, Boral Sword, BLS, Unicorn, Platinum Gadget, and Dagda, who's an easy way to turn free specials into a Tornado Dragon and an extra deck lock. So with that, let's jump into the games. So given that our deck has almost no game whatsoever against most meta strategies, I thought it would be fun to take a look at some matchups that I found particularly interesting. Our first opponent is on Gishki Handloop, and unfortunately, this showcases how we intend to win most of our games. Our opponent's going to go into a copy of Gishki Abyss, next they're going to activate Vision's Effect, and then Shadows, followed by a Salvage to put those two back in the grip. After that, they're going to activate an Aquamere for a Goost Kraken, and goodbye to my Parallel Exceed. Next, they'll Preparation of Rites, and then fire off an extra Foolish Burial to send a copy of Herald to the Graveyard to get a copy of Incantation. And Inception. They'll Aquamere for a Mind Algus, and then slowly shuffle these cards back into the deck, triggering the effect of Cross Sheep, drawing two, and discarding as well. Next, they're going to activate the effect of Talismandra in hand in order to special summon a copy of Kandal. That Kandal is going to get a Mirror, and then they'll make another Goose Kraken, and rip another card out of our opener. Too bad for them, we still have the material for a Rank 4. They will end on a Bookstone and pass it back to us. For turn we draw, well, it doesn't really matter. We're going to Normal Summon a copy of Gold Gadget, go into a Red Gadget, get a copy of Yellow Gadget from deck, Link Summon a copy of Platinum Gadget, Special Summon a Silver Gadget, Special Summon a Yellow Gadget, and guess which Rank 4 we're going to make. We'll go to Battle Phase, activate the effect of 
Utopia double, go into Utopia, attack. We don't even need to negate, honestly. They're already at 4,000 life points, but this should be more than enough for lethal. Our second match is up against Super Quants. I'll be honest with you, I have never, and will never, read a Super Quant monster. The only thing I remember them for is a tribute engine during Monarch format. Our hand is as good as it gets. We're going to lead with a copy of Silver Gadget, followed by a Red Gadget activation to get a yellow to hand, before Link summoning a Platinum Gadget and a couple of Parallel Exceeds at the same time. We're going to activate the effect of Platinum Gadget for the Yellow Gadget, and then overlay for a copy of Rathlesia, fire off this copy of Phantom Knights of Shade Brigantine, and overlay for Redoer. It doesn't get better than this. For turn, we even get a spell off of the Redoer. They're going to call a Reasoning. I go for a 1. Unfortunately, I am incorrect. They're next going to e Telly for a copy of Blue Lair. They'll fire off a Pod of Desires, and Normal Summon an Alphan. Now, Alphan I recognize is something I should Floodgate, They'll go into the ship to go into a copy of Grand Pulse. This triggers the Trick Clown in Graveyard, and they'll overlay for a green. Not interested in seeing that remain on board, I will activate the effect of Redoer, and they'll pass it back to us. We'll activate Redoer, and then activate its effect to draw before overlaying for a Spin Breaker. We'll activate Platinum Gadget, and then go into a copy of Unicorn in order to tuck back Blue. They're going to activate Blue's effect in Graveyard, but we get in for a ton here. 25 plus O. Oh. Well, this complicates things, but by destroying the Earth Machine on my side of the field, I can get the Citadel back from the graveyard and walk over their Xyz monster. In main feast 2, I'll set a Sanctum and pass back to them, flipping it in standby phase, getting a Scythe, and hopefully closing out the game. Unfortunately, it doesn't go as I had hoped. They'll go to battle phase, I'll fire off Citadel, a little quick on the trigger finger there. They're going to go into a red layer and an Alphan, that Alphan turns on the whole deck for another red layer and a blue layer effect in Graveyard. Oh boy, those all get shuffled back, they set the quick play and pass it back to me. Still okay, we're going to normal summon a copy of Gold Gadget, they will infinite in permanence, we'll go to battle phase and attack over this copy of red layer, it triggers the effect of red layer, going into blue layer and allowing us to attack over it as well. They have a damage juggler for the piercing on the spin breaker, frustrating, so we have to set one card and pass it back to them, with an Xyz on their side of the field. What a rip! They get to walk over the board as best they can, and then in main phase 2, fire off Monster Reborn, activating Red Layer's effect for a green in hand, going into their link, and popping off. This triggers just about every single effect under the sun, again, none of which I will be reading. They're going to go into Gram Pulse, and then activate the effect of Gram Pulse. Thankfully, Phantom Knights of Shade Brigandine interacts with this in a particularly beneficial way for us. Unfortunately, uh, they have enough on their side of the field after activating the effect of Alphan in order to trigger the effect of Green Layer and... The effect of Magna Carrier. Are we really gonna have to out a six mat Magus? Okay, well, we're overlay for Utopia double. That prompts the Magus. I go for the double in response and then realize, unfortunately, it doesn't target. Okay, I'll attack into their Link monster. That triggers the graveyard effect of Citadel, but 3,000 is unfortunately less than 3,600. Our opponent draws the quick play, and unfortunately, I just don't have a good answer to this Magus. We'll activate Called by the Grave to prevent the activation of the Red Layer effect, but I still can't deal with the outstanding threat on the board. We've got to draw something crazy off the top, and Effect Veiler is not it. It's still unaffected, at least until next turn. They're going to go ahead and go to Battle Phase, walk over my Silver Gadget, prompting me to summon a Gold from Deck, which is all I have left. We gotta draw a 4 at least. A Parallel Exceed. Too little, too late. The third copy as well. They draw a copy of Alphan. They'll activate the effect of Magus. I'm now free to effect Veiler, but unfortunately, they have the Called by the Grave, and that is likely going to be the end of the game. They will shuffle back my monster, special summon a White Layer, get in for 24, and get in for lethal. But what a match! So, it's time for game three, and our opponent is on Chainbeat. Chainbeat versus Gadget in 2020! God, I miss when Yu-Gi-Oh! was like this. Alright, let's see what they've cooked up. We're going to lead with a copy of Gold Gadget, we'll then activate Shade Brigandine, so we can overlay for a Redoer after setting two. Not a fantastic start. We'll take the top card of our opponent's deck in the standby phase. Ooh, a spell. They'll activate Fury of Kerushin before activating Terraforming, Normal Summoning a Rabbit, and setting four plus a Black Garden. We'll activate Redoer, they will chain out Rabbit, of course, but we'll put that Black Garden on top of the deck gladly. We'll take it in the standby phase and then draw a card in main phase one before overlaying for Spin Breaker, triggering the Torrential Tribute, and then triggering the Graveyard Effect of Spin Breaker so we can get back this copy of Gold Gadget. Lose one turn triggers, so we'll fire off this copy of Machina Overdrive for a Citadel, destroying the gold gadget so we can get a copy of Silver from deck. Seems okay so far, especially since we aren't doing damage. We'll set two and pass it back to our opponent. They draw another, lose one turn. What are the chances? We'll go for the kill with Citadel. They're going to activate Compulse Escape. We'll activate Sanctum. They'll activate Wind Up Rabbit, and they'll activate Lose One Turn. Okay, we'll shuffle back this copy of Scythe and then draw for turn. All right, we'll switch our monsters to attack position, getting in for big damage this turn, putting them at 35, setting a copy of Brigandine, a little frustrating with all these traps in the graveyard, but no big deal. They'll fire off a pot of duality, finding off the top. Ooh, a tanky, that's nice. They'll activate the tanky to get a copy of bear. They will bear effect, but unfortunately for them, I have an effect veiler. It'll be negated, and then afterwards, they'll proceed to battle phase and walk over silver. No big deal. I will gladly take an opportunity to get gold. Two lose 
one turns, independently trigger, losing it two turns, I suppose, will try to destroy with Citadel, they will tag out with a copy of Wind Up Rabbit, and reveal that their last set card is in fact the third lose one turn. Ouch. Sometimes, you just lose a lot of turns. We're going to activate the Graveyard Effect of Overdrive to draw a yellow off the top, ugh, immediately followed by a red. Okay, we'll use yellow's effect, we'll overlay for a copy of Raphlesia, go to battle phase, and deal lethal damage. So, it's time for game two, and... <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, our opponent's going first. Let's see what they can get done. They're going to lead with a copy of Pot of Extravagance, drawing two cards off the top of their deck before firing off a Terraforming and a Fury of Kerushin for a Torrential Tribute. They'll normal summon a copy of Wind Up Rabbit, set four and pass. Our hand's good. I don't know if it's good enough to beat this. We're going to get a Yellow Gadget and a Machina Citadel. That will get them a token and unfortunately prompt the Torrential Tribute and the Wind Up Rabbit effect, so they will net one rose as we lose our board. We'll set four and pass it back to our opponent, who draws for turn a Tanky. Come on. They're going to normal summon a copy of Gorilla. That gets us a token, but unfortunately allows them to destroy, ooh, the worst possible option. We'll trigger the effect of Scythe on what is undoubtedly the most critical turn. They'll walk over one of our tokens, and as they attempt to attack over Scythe, we'll activate Sanctum in order to pop the Black Garden with the effect of Morale Tech. We're still taking 300 for our trouble, but they're going to switch this token to defense position, and from here we can freely pop off. We're going to draw a Silver Gadget for turn. We'll normal summon the Silver Gadget, then activate Overdrive. That's going to get a Citadel from deck. We'll trigger the effect of Silver Gadget. They'll activate Wind Up Rabbit's effect. I don't know why they're doing this now. Afterwards, we're going to activate Citadel effect and no way oh, okay we'll activate the effect of green they'll chain citadel to wipe our board unfortunately for them the citadel prompts the citadel and graveyard we get ours back they're gonna torrential but ladies and gentlemen we're at parody versus chain beat they'll get in for 1650 and 1400 things are looking quite grim we'll activate overdrive's effect here we do get to draw some cards and put some gadgets back while we have a red in hand just to draw the yellow off the top are you kidding me we'll normal summon a red gadget and attack our opponent's going to activate wind up rabbit and evil swarm thunderbird so we're only going to get in for 1300 we'll pass it back to them and they're going to get all of their monsters back in the standby phase only to be able to set a lose one turn as well We'll get Citadel from Graveyard, they're going to Rabbit and then activate Zero Force, we'll chain Citadel so that we can destroy their monsters, but unfortunately it doesn't work as planned as Thunderbird can tag out in response. Well, our monster's attack does go back shortly, we're going to normal summon a copy of Yellow Gadget, and then make ourselves a Platinum, just to be met with a lose one turn. We're not going to be able to activate Platinum or the effect of Parallel Exceed, which is now locked in defense position with 8 stars. We get in for 16, but they're getting a lot of monsters back momentarily. We're going to bring them both back in standby, then normal summon a copy of DD Seeker. We're going to activate Trap Trick to get a copy of Overdrive. They'll attack over our copy of Platinum Gadget. We're going to get a Citadel instead that triggers lose one turn and the effect of Platinum, so we get a Gold Gadget for our trouble. We'll go to Main Phase 2 and End Phase, and unfortunately, they just can't keep up with Machina Overdrive. We'll activate Overdrive's effect, shuffling back all these gadgets again and triggering the effect of Citadel. They're going to trigger the effect of DD and Wind Up and Thunderbird, but unfortunately, doing so puts them dead to what's in our hand. We'll normal summon a copy of Green Gadget in order to get a red one, switch our monsters to attack position, and attack for a very satisfying lethal. So we're back with the deck, and man, and there's just something beautiful about a deck like this. Tons of different archetypes working in harmony to create a cohesive, adaptable whole. <sighs> they just don't make them like this anymore. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it's got an unreasonable amount of options. It turns out we've kind of hit a critical mass of rank 4 tools, and now you can do anything from domain lock your opponent, to cure in their board, to skill drain, provided you can manage two gadgets. Two, it swamps fair decks in advantage. If only Yu-Gi-Oh! was still a game about effectively managing your resources, this deck would kick. And three, the interaction between Machina Overdrive and the gadgets is hilarious. You don't have to double up on bricks, you don't have to invest in Emerald first thing, you just get to summon a Citadel and get rewarded. And the cons. One, it's got absolutely no game against meta. It can't chew through multiple negates, it can't beat established back row. That's the death knell for any rogue strategy. Two, its reliance on some extremely unfair things does tend to put a target on its head. A lot of the stuff you're using to go over the top of broken decks is pretty specific, and makes this otherwise unpredictable strategy extremely predictable. And three, it's a YCS winner not designed to make me have an aneurysm. I mean, I'm happy, but what about the viewers? All in all, this is an extremely fun deck that captures a type of Yu-Gi-Oh we have all but lost. Unfortunately, we lost it for a reason. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons Meepmoto27, Tamamo Bay, Alex Perea, Austin Lyles, Candyman, Crispy, 
Mika Reichman, Sir Tachyon, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums the fourth, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Austin Zell, Chad Bortz, Presley Case in the fourth, Moira Brown, Angry Bread, Lucky Number Five, Amid Elefondi, Nick Extreme ninety nine, Miyuna Arashi, Jason Leonard, Andrew Boyko, Dunk Coro, Nick Dolores, Marty Caldwell, Make Fetza, Blue Boy, Shane Meadow Edits Pronga, David Daniels, Red Eyes, Shadow Fusion, Josh, CJ Alex, Stevie Blunder, Darcy Tevs, Mitchell Cook, Sam Soon, Kurokaze, Chorps Away, Haruf, Jane Linya, Stojan is Trubbish, Lucas Hansen, Algis, Marcin Cavitius, Lavender Lemonade, Zach McKee, Gustavo Secon, Siberian Rabbit, Pro FP two, Gamer Games, Michael Oskvark, Dan the Man Hoban, Blab, Blake Root, Standards Objective, Jeff Leonard, Emperor Stove, TJ Steakhouse, Dominic. Ernst, Pro Yugi Dad, Picnic Blasted, Lawrence, Jell Du Rado, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fang Wong, Donnie Fillerup, Adam Sundquist, Isaac Jackson, Second, Lucas Geardis, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Distrin, and others. If you like what you see, consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.